the first step of your process is going to be just to clean off your windshield before you figure out where you're going to want to place your camera. Now for me, I'm killing two birds with one stone here because the wife's been on me for a while to get the windshield clean, so I'm getting double duty out of this job. So the next part of your process is to figure out where exactly you want to place the camera. Now quite frankly in the owner's manual they kind of showed it going off over here to the side and that may have to deal with different regulations and laws according to your state. So you're going to need to look into that and see what works best for you. For me since I want to be able to from time to time review videos things like that I'm going to want it over here on the driver's side where I can be able to see things. The other thing you need to keep in mind is a lot of times you want to mount your camera way up high but the problem you'll have with that is if you live in a climate like I do where it snows a lot what can happen is is if your wipers don't clean off the windshield area in front of where your camera is going to be mounted then the problem you're going to have is when it rains or when it snows or something like that you're not going to be able to see out your camera because your wipers aren't going to be able to clean off that area. So for me what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to end up mounting it about right in here here but to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on the car turn on my wipers and I want to see exactly where those line up and that'll tell me where I can mount my dash cam so what I did is I turned the car on turned on the wipers and then stopped the car when my wiper got up as far as it could. Now I can see from here that my wiper on the passenger side will come all the way up over into here and then the one on my driver's side will go along in here. So I should be safe if I mount mine just right next to my driver's or my rear view mirror I can mount it right next to it and then that way I can get a good view of what's going on. Now the other thing you may want to consider is is which block you want to use. One of the things I noticed it has two of these that have the deeper angle to them and initially I thought these were actually two different angles and in realistic realistically speaking they're actually the same identical angle. I believe what this is for is so you can put these in two different vehicles so you can actually move your dash cam to two separate vehicles should you have that. But I do like the stability that having the adhesive gives and I don't have to worry about it falling off and the heat and the cold and things of that nature. So I'm going to check out when I do this with the with the deeper one and I'll do it over here so maybe you can get a better view my lens is kind of just facing straight down and it's not going to do me any goods for me to be able to view things so basically you can just pop these out to the side like I just did there and now I'm going to try it with the flat one in and I want to see how that works by the way you'll see how they're wider on one end and narrow on the other it just makes it easier because if you look at your dash cam it's wider on the end that has your camera lens and narrower on the opposite end so for me to just do a quick trial I'm going to just take my base and I'm going to slide it inside these two grooves that you have right in here so by the way these only slide in on one side there's like a stop that's built into the base so it can't slide on out it has to slide in from one side and in this case it's like this so once you mount your dash cam into the vehicle so there you go so once your dash cam is mounted and your adhesive strip is mounted to the windshield the way to quick release it is you'll slide it to the right or to the passenger side it won't go out towards the left or the driver's side. So now I'm going to take the more flat base. What I don't like is they only include one flat base. So what I don't understand is why they've given us two of the bigger bases and only one of the flat base. That's a downside. So I'm going to take a look at it here. And I kind of like the flat base better. But then what you have to look at is where your camera will be aiming out and it should be good about right in here just up above where my rear view mirror is so now I can have my rear view mirror and I can have my monitor right next to it so I'm gonna mount it right up there so what I have done 
as I have brought out, and it's not included in the kit, but I've done enough of these kind of things to know. I just brought out some isopropyl alcohol, and I brought out a, uh, a cotton swab here. And basically, I'm just going to wet my cotton ball a little bit. And in the area where I'm going to be mounting this, I'm going to wipe down that glass area just to make sure it's really clean. And I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll go ahead and we will mount our camera. Now that the area is dried where my camera is going to mount from the alcohol I rubbed on there, you're going to come back here, you're going to just peel off this little red tape that covers up your adhesive. And you're going to want to be really careful and know for sure because you're really only going to get one try at this. So remember your camera's towards the bottom and that's the only part you need to be the most concerned about that's going to be in front of where your wipers are. So you can mount with your screen a bit higher. You just want to make sure that your camera is mounted in the right position. So I'm looking. I want it to be about right in here. And I want to make sure it's level just like that. And now I have that mounted. Now the downside to where I've installed mine, and that could be why in the manual they show it on the right side of the mirror, is now anytime I want to take my camera off, I am going to have to move my mirror a bit, and then I can slide my camera off and then slide it back on. Now I, you know, that is the downside to mounting it where I did, but primarily this isn't something I'm planning to be taking in and out of the car a lot. This is going to be primarily staying in this vehicle. If I want to have one in another vehicle, I'll buy a separate one and install it in that particular vehicle. So now what you got to do, the next step of your process is going to be to run your power supply. Now I have two different power supplies in this vehicle. We have one that's mounted higher up here on the dash and one that's down lower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cord. It's going to go up here. I'm going to run it along here and run it down. And I'm basically going to hide that wire so you don't have wires hanging down in front of where you're trying to see while you're driving. I've plugged in my power supply into my dash cam. Now what I'll do is I'm just going to run that line straight up. And if you wanted to, in this case, you could maybe run it over to where your rear view mirror is. But I don't see a need for that for what I'm doing. And there'll be a little lip up here on the front of your liner. And you can just tuck that wire up in there. And you'll run along here. Now when I get over here to this edge, you have this plastic for your pillars. And all I'm going to use is I have... One of my other funny Harbor Freight tools, I have their trim tool here, and I'm just going to use that to kind of pull this out a little bit, just enough for me to tuck that in. I'll put a link in the description for these tools as well, because I think it would help you. So I, with this, I can just kind of pull that out a little bit, and then I can, and I can tuck that wire down inside of there, and then I can just finish tucking that in as I go around, and I can actually use this tool to also tuck the wire in as well. We're going to go around here, down through our trim here, down the sides, and we're just going to run it up underneath our dash and we'll plug it in over here. Now that we're down along the bottom, we'll just keep using our tool and we're just going to continue to work that wire down along the bottom. and. Hopefully my leg won't be in the way, but you'll see we have an opening here. That'll be a great spot where we can run our wire through there, underneath the dash, and over to our power supply. So I'm just going to remove this trim so it makes it easier for me to just tuck this down along the way. I ran my power supply so it goes all the way around underneath my dash. It's into my center console down here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that because I can only get so much angle. So my camera is mounted up here to the left of my rear view mirror. And so now I have my additional power supply over here. And now we're going to plug it in and let's see how we did. So I can just tuck extra cord down. And there we go, we are live, and our video is now recording.
Well, now that you have your mounting bracket installed on your windshield, you're ready to start using your dash cam. However, it would be nice to know what all the features and buttons are on your new dash cam. So let's go through all those. Let's start with a, just a side view here. And over here, you have your micro SD card slot, which is located right here. Basically, all you have to do is just press that down in and then your card will pop out as you see here and you're able to remove that. This here is the 16 gig card that actually comes with the dash cam. And we'll go ahead and just press that back down in and it will lock into place. Right here we have our power button so you can turn your dash cam off and on. We'll switch over here to this side here. You, you see you have your little mounting brackets where you can slide those in and that's how you'll mount it. Here we have our camera which is located right in here. And this is adjustable, by the way, as you see here, you can move this down and it will move quite a bit up. And let's do a side view here so you can see it again. So you can adjust this. So based on the angle of your windshield, maybe your windshield's a bit more, let's say like this, you would want to have your camera be more straight coming out this way. And then once again with me, I like to have it where basically my dash is at the, or in my hood is at the bottom of the screen. I don't want it to fill up half my screen. And so you do have adjustments on that. Now, if we move over here to this side, over here you have your power input. So this here is where you're gonna plug into it. Let me move it this way so we're looking at it in the right direction. We have a reset button that's located right here. And then over here we have our audio video output. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. So here we are here, we're on the front of the camera. We're gonna go ahead and press our power. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. So we have power to be able to go through and show you how to do all this. And now your cam comes on. And you'll see it automatically is in a video mode and it's already recording because we have the flashing red light up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna press my okay button and you'll see that our flashing red light's gone away. So now we're more or less inside of a standby mode. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is you'll see it has a, a little camera that's up over here, a video camera that tells me I'm in video mode. If I press my mode button, which is located right here one more time, you'll see now it switches to a camera. This now means I'm in a camera mode where I can take pictures. And if I wanted to take a picture, all I would have to do is press the OK button. And I've now taken a picture. So what we can do now is while you're in camera mode, if you'll press the menu button, what it will do is it will take you into your list of features. So when you're in capture mode, you'll scroll down, you'll press the OK button. And you'll see here you can have it set where it's basically a single picture so when you hit the ok button it's going to take a picture these uh, two second five second ten second timers are on a delay so if you wanted to be able to kind of set it down or maybe get in front of the car or something like that and take a picture maybe you put it on a 10 second delay you would press the ok button when you're back into your photo mode and it would wait 10 seconds before it actually took a picture. So in my case, I just leave it on the single setting. Now we can come down and we have our resolution. And in resolution, basically you can set it to a 12 megapixel uh, photo, you can set it to a 10 megapixel or an eight megapixel photo there as well. I leave mine set on the highest resolution at 12 megapixels. We can come in here to compression and basically with that we can select the quality of the picture. Do we want it to be real fine? Do we want it normal? Or do we want to go with economy to maybe save some space on our card? I just leave mine in normal mode. I don't really take pictures with mine. That wasn't what I really got it for. However, if you're in the event of like an accident or something and wanted to take pictures, this may be a case where you'd want to go into fine mode so later on you could really zoom in and get into all the details. Next, we have our sharpness. You can just adjust your sharpness settings on here. I leave those in normal as well. If we continue down, you can adjust your white balance. And basically, here's where you can set it to things. I leave it on auto because I'm going to be dealing with different types of lighting situations, if you will. Once again, we can also adjust our color. You can go with black and white. You can go with sepia. It, it's up to you in terms of how you want to do that. I just leave mine set in color. 
We can change our ISO settings. Once again, I leave that on auto. You can change your exposure settings and I just leave that right there in the middle again. Anti-shaking is basically a stabilization mode. And so as you'll see, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that to the on position. So that way it'll help take better pictures. And then you can also set it with a date stamp and you can tell it, do you want to do just the date? Do you want to do the date and the time? Or do you not want that off? So in my case, I have it set to date and time. So once you're done with that and you've gone through all those different options, you'll just press your menu button again and you're back out. If I press it again, now I'm in a preview mode where I can actually look at videos and pictures that are saved onto my card. And then if I press my mode button again, I'm back into where I'm able to record. So let's go across some of these buttons here across the bottom. We already know that we have our mode button here. Our next button here is our menu button or our lock button. Should you wanna lock a specific video or a photo, you're able to do that here as well. Our next button is our scroll up button or our mic button. Then we have our down button and our okay, or shall we call it our select button. So now that we're in a standby mode on video, if we press our menu button one time, this will take us into our menu options for video. You'll notice up over here, it says video. And these here are the options that we can set when we're in video mode. So if we come down here, we can go through, we can change our resolution between 1080 and 720. I have mine set at 1080. You can set your loop recording feature. I like to leave mine on naturally, otherwise your video recording time is gonna be limited by your card. If you remember before I talked about, they mentioned it will record um, basically at nine gigs I'm sorry, nine minutes per gig as it records. So, and that's based off of the 720 setting, not the 1080, which is gonna be quite a bit less. So if you put it in a loop recording mode, you'll be able to just continually loop and the old video will go away as the new video comes in. And I have mine set on five minute intervals. So we can press okay. Now we can come back here our next one here, and I believe in my first video, I called this wide range dynamics and I always get them messed up here. This is actually wide dynamic range. And basically what that means is it's a term that they use in surveillance cameras. And basically it implies that the camera can handle bright and dark conditions and it improves the quality of your freeze frame, right? So that way as you're driving and you go through shady areas, sunlit areas, drive through a tunnel under a bridge, something like that, it's able to accommodate the wide range of lighting conditions that you're gonna be dealing with. And I have mine set to on because I wanna be able to accommodate all my different driving conditions. Next, we have our G sensor, and this here is where we can turn it on and set our sensitivity. Basically, you could have it off if you wanted to. And in G sensor mode, what will happen is, is it will start recording when an, it will start recording when an impact is detected and it will lock that video so that it cannot be overwritten. So now if you're already in a recording mode and it detects an impact, it will automatically lock that video that it's recording so it cannot be deleted or it can't be overwritten um, without you coming in and doing your programming settings. So I have mine set on a medium grade. You could go with a high uh, in terms of sensitivity or a low sensitivity. Maybe if you live on a dirt road or it's really bumpy, you'll wanna go with lower so it's not saving your videos all the time. But here in town, I have mine set on medium. We can go in, we can change our exposure and how we want to do that. I always just leave mine right there in the middle because quite frankly, I'm not real well versed in how I want to do those, but you can adjust your exposure settings. We press our arrow down again. We have motion detection and I do have mine turned off. You can turn it on whether you want to or not. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and turn mine on here as we finish this up. With motion detecting, detection, if your camera is in a standby mode, basically what that means is if it detects a car driving by or somebody walking in front of the camera, any kind of motion on the camera, your video will turn on and begin recording for a short clip to capture what's going on in front of the camera. So we can go ahead and set this to on and press okay. And now we're back to our menu. 
Record audio just gives us the ability to turn on our microphone off or on and I have mine set to the on. Here we have our date stamp and basically we just can tell it if we want to have a date stamp put on our video or not. And now we're back up to the beginning again. So now if we press our menu button again, it takes us back out and we're onto our regular screen now again. So if you press your menu button twice, and let me show you here. So here's one. Oh, now we gotta stop it, start a recording because it detected motion. So now we'll turn off our video. So now we press it once and twice and you'll see it went blue over here. This here is our general setup settings. This here would be our video settings. This is our general settings. And you'll see over here, it even says setup. So now what you can do is you can scroll down and here is where we can vary our date and time. And you can even change the format that you wanna have it be in. You could have year, month, day, year, day, month. Uh, I like the day, month, year settings. And so that's how we'll leave that. So you can go through and just press all those, get the desired setting you want, and you can adjust those with your up and down arrow buttons. So we'll get out of that. I'll press my, and once again, it detects motion. So we'll press our menu button twice and we're back in. Here's where we can have our auto power off. So basically after a certain time frame with no action or anything going on, it will power down the system and you can set those. I have mine shut off so I can press okay. Ketone is basically where you can have it to where it makes a beep when you press any of the buttons or not. I have mine set to on. And Park Guard, basically if you have a power interruption, meaning where you plug in your power supply, if it shuts off when you turn your car off to get out, what will happen is, is your dash cam will go into a standby mode. And then if it detects a, a shock or a hit or something that sets off the sensor, it will begin recording and it will take just a short video clip and it will save that here onto it for you. And you can adjust the sensitivity of that as well so i have mine set on high so in the event i'm parked somewhere and somebody bumps my car it's going to start recording hopefully i can catch you hit my car there and get my car fixed by them now we can scroll down again here you can set your languages based on what language you want to see and what you speak you can turn your audio video out here basically what you're going to be able to do is you're going to adjust what type of audio video you're going to put out now basically as standard you have your two options you have your ntsc which is your national television standards committee which is what we use here in the united states and then you have your phase alternating line which is what they use mostly like in europe australia and asia so you can set those here in terms of how you want your video and your audio to be output so we'll press ok there here we can have our screensaver. You'll see it has a number five there, and that's basically because I have mine set at five minutes. So after five minutes, it will shut off my screen and it will, that way it saves my screen and hence the name screensaver. You can set that to off or you can adjust it to one of your other time settings. This one here is the most confusing for a lot of people. And this here is where you can set your frequency on here. Now, since we live here in the United States, we have our set on 60 Hertz. Basically, this has to deal with your electrical supply that is in your country that you live in. And your electrical basically operates on a, on a, uh, on a Hertz in terms of its frequency. And so if you live in the United States, you'll want this on 60 because all your electricity uses 60 Hertz. If you live outside of North America, let's say you would set it on 50 Hertz and it helps keep you from getting that flicker in your lighting when you're recording is the easiest way for me to explain that. We're not gonna get into the big details on that. You could Google it if you want to, but in North America, you want it on 60. The rest of the world, you'll set that to 50. I've really never noticed huge variances in the quality of my video, but it's always best to just set it the way that it should be set. So we'll press OK. Here's where we can format our micro SD card that we're putting in. So if you're putting in a new card, you need to format it. You can do that here. Here's where we can go back and just set everything back to their default settings. And then lastly, we can press this button and we can just find out what version of software that we're using here in our camera. So now once we do that and we come back out, we can press our menu button. 
and once again we know that we're out on here so as we take a look and see once again it's detecting some motion because i moved it there so you'll see our red lights on now so that tells us that it's recording this here is the length of my video as it's recording right now this is the quality of my video i have my shock sensor on i'm actually recording it's charging the battery up here using the sd card I have my wide dynamic ranges turned on, uh, my ISOs, once again, these here relate to my camera settings and my brightness and my f-stops and whatnot, those are set. I have a five minute delay and I'm in video mode. So basically that's how it all works. So hopefully this has helped you set up your dash cam so that you're able to get it set up and be able to use this in your car. If this video has been helpful for you, would you do me a favor please and hit that like button for me. It just lets YouTube know you appreciate my content and it's been helpful for you. If you'd like to see more videos like these in the future, why don't you hit that subscribe button and stick around with me. Thanks for watching.